all living things are made of cells. You're made of cells. These ducts are made of cells. And the cells that make up your body and these ducts' bodies, these ducts, these little ducklings are obviously going to grow to become big ducks. Well, in order for a, a small duct to grow into a big duck, it needs more cells. Cells are constantly growing and then dividing, and then growing and then dividing. And in fact, even as this adult duck lives, or as you when you become an adult and continue to live and stay approximately the same size, your cells will continue to divide. The reason is that cells constantly have to replace dead cells, or they have to heal from injury, or they have to allow for development of an organism. That normal cell division process that takes place all the time is called mitosis. Now, the word we see at the top of this slide is not mitosis, this is meiosis. Mitosis and meiosis are two different forms of cell division. Mitosis takes place all the time in all kinds of cells. Meiosis is a specialized kind of cell division in which sexually reproducing organisms produce sex cells. So sperm and eggs are produced through the process of meiosis. As we learn about meiosis, we will identify how many sets of genes are found in most adult organisms. We'll describe the events that occur during each phase of meiosis. It takes place over several stages or phases. We will identify the differences between meiosis and mitosis. And finally, we will explain how two alleles from different genes can be inherited together. Chromosomes are strands of DNA and protein inside the cell nucleus. Chromosomes are the carriers of genes. The genes are located in specific positions on chromosomes. Almost every cell in your, bodies, in your body has two copies of each chromosome one from your father and one from your mother. These chromosomes have the same genes. They occur in pairs and they are what we call homologous. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 total chromosomes. And again, these chromosomes are paired up into what we call homologous pairs. The example we see on this slide is from a fruit fly. The fruit fly's body cells are diploid, which means they contain both sets of homologous chromosomes. We indicate a diploid cell by using the notation 2n. The gametes, remember gametes are sperm and eggs, the gametes are haploid. Haploid means that the cell contains only a single set of chromosomes and it's indicated by the notation 1n. Most cells in our bodies are diploid. The only cells that are typically haploid are the sex cells, the sperm and the eggs. Before mitosis occurs, a parent cell is diploid. We're talking about mitosis here. Remember, mitosis is the everyday cell division that replaces dead cells, that allows for growth. It happens in cells that are, it happens in all your, virtually all your cells. So it happens in cells that are not sex cells. So mitosis, in mitosis, you start with diploid parent cells. And then at the end of mitosis, you have two daughter cells that are both diploid. So you have diploid cells that are making more diploid cells. In mitosis, the cells are, are essentially making exact copies of themselves. If you look at a single chromosome in this picture, you will see that each chromosome in a diploid cell has a partner, a pair, or it's part of a pair. Those are the pairs of homologous chromosomes, or they can just be referred to as homologous pairs. Each chromosome here is duplicated because the cell has just replicated its DNA so that it can enter the process of cell division. A cell has to copy its DNA 
before it can split in two to make two cells from one cell through mitosis. Let's look at mitosis. Mitosis is something you should have learned about in an earlier class, probably in middle school when you learned about cells. So this is probably a review for you. Mitosis occurs in a few different stages. Those stages are called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The goal of mitosis is to create nuclei for new cells. And then the end product after mitosis occurs, after you've created a new nucleus, then the cell divides and becomes two separate cells, each with an exact copy of the original DNA. So the end product of mitosis is two genetically identical daughter cells from one parent cell. Again, most cells in your body have two of each chromosome, two copies of each chromosome, homologous pairs. Sex cells are haploid. The cells that are not sex cells, body cells, they're also known as somatic cells. Somatic cells are diploid. It's important because gametes, eggs and sperm, need to be haploid so that when fertilization occurs, the offspring do not end up with two full sets of chromosomes from each parent. They want one full set of their own chromosomes that include parts well, that, that include the chromosomes of each parent. So each individual has its own set of chromosomes, its own full set of chromosomes. So the haploid sex cells, haploid gametes, form, uh, are formed through meiosis so that when they fertilize, when one fertilizes the other, then you end up with a diploid cell which can divide and make more diploid cells because every cell in your body is a diploid cell except for gametes. The process that produces sex cells, meiosis therefore, needs to divide nuclei and shuffle chromosomes so that resulting cells have half the normal chromosome number. Before meiosis begins, every chromosome is copied. So the cell has four copies of each chromosome. The stages of meiosis are then divided into two segments, meiosis one and meiosis two. Think as you look more closely at each stage of meiosis about how they are similar to and different from the stages of mitosis. Mitosis doesn't have mitosis one and mitosis two. In mitosis, you, the DNA is copied, the nucleus, is, the nucleus divides, and then the cell divides. In meiosis, you have these, this two-stage process in which the genes get mixed up so that no two gametes are the same as each other. In mitosis, in mitosis, goal is to have two exact genetically identical daughter cells. In meiosis, the goal is to produce a variety of, of gametes. So each one is genetically unique. We can see from this overview of meiosis one and my after at the end of meiosis one, you're going to have two uh, two daughter cells, and then those are going to split again. So one full cycle of meiosis, of meiosis one and meiosis two, you start with one cell and you end up with actually, you start with one diploid cell, and then that actually copies its DNA. So you have four copies, you have four of each chromosome, but then by the end of meiosis two, you have four haploid daughter cells. Meiosis I begins with prophase I. If we look at the major structures that are present in a, a nucleus undergoing prophase I, 
we see, well, in its cell undergoing prophase one, we see that it has centrioles. These centrioles are little bodies that are going to help pull the, the chromosomes apart. We see a spindle forming between, between the centrioles. That spindle uh, attaches to the chromosomes. We see the nuclear envelope, which is the membrane surrounding the nucleus. We see the chromosomes, and notice that the chromosomes are uh, paired with each other. They're in homologous pairs. And we see something called the centromere. The centromere is at the center of the chromosome. In prophase one of meiosis, each replicated chromosome pairs with its corresponding homologous chromosome. This pairing forms a structure called a tetrad which contains four chromatids, one half, one, you, you see the chromosomes are in sort of a, an X shape, one half of that, the left half or the right half, each half is called a chromatid. So when the chromosomes pair with each other, you have four chromatids, which makes up a tetrad. As the homologous chromosomes form tetrads, they undergo a process called crossing over. Crossing over is super important. It's what leads to variation. And variation, remember, is what drives evolution and makes populations more diverse. So the, the, chromato, the chromatids, I'm sorry, of the homologous chromosomes cross over one another. Then the crossed sections of the chromatids, which contain alleles, are exchanged. Little pieces get passed from one chromatid to the other. Crossing over, therefore, produces new combinations of alleles in the cell. Crossing over affects the alleles of a chromosome because the, during this process, the alleles can be exchanged between chromatids of homologous chromosomes to produce new combinations of alleles. The next phase of meiosis is metaphase one. During metaphase one, paired homologous chromosomes line up across the center of the cell. You can see the homologous chromosomes lined up along the center. They just migrate there. My, metaphase one is of meiosis is similar to metaphase one of mitosis because they essentially the same thing happens. The chromosomes line up along the center of the cell. The pink and yellow chromosomes and the little pieces of chromosomes show that the uh, they show the result of crossing over. So the yellow the yellow parts are originally from one of the organism's parents, and the red pieces are originally from the other parent. So during crossing over, the 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 DNA from the mother and the DNA from the father get exchanged with each other to form these new combinations of genes. If you look at this cell, you can see there are eight different chromatids. And at this point, we, when we started out, the chromatids were, the sister chromatids were identical. Now, after crossing over, None of the chromatids are identical because crossing over exchanged alleles. Now, remember, a, a real chromosome is much, it's super, very long, and there's going to be much more crossing over taking place than just what we see here, where one yellow segment gets exchanged with one red, uh, pink segment or red segment. There's going to be a lot of mixing of those alleles during crossing over of something as complex as a human. During anaphase one, the spindle fibers, they attach to the chromatids and they pull each homologous chromosome pair toward opposite ends of the cell. Anaphase one then cuts the chromosome number in half because it, it pulls those chromatids apart. And those sister chromatids are going to end up in different nuclei of the next phase. The next phase is telophase one. 
in which a nuclear membrane forms around each cluster of chromosomes. Cytokinesis follows telophase one, forming two cells. You can see the cells starting to pinch in the middle here. That's the beginning of cytokinesis. Telophase one, the nuclear envelopes reform. So now you have two nuclei, and then cytokinesis is where the the cell pinches off between the two nuclei, so you end up with two cells, each with its own nucleus. And you can see because of crossing over, each cell is genetically different from the other. Anaphase one and telophase one of meiosis differ from anaphase and telophase in mitosis, because remember in mitosis, the objective was to produce two identical cells Whereas in meiosis one, in, in, in meiosis, we doubled the number of chromosomes and then we had crossing over and then we split the number of chromosomes in half. So we still have uh, a full complement of chromosomes. They're still, they're still doubled. At the end of meiosis one, we have two daughter cells, and these two daughter cells are actually haploid. Each cell has only one set of chromosomes, even though each chromosome exists as sister chromatids. The two cells produced by meiosis one have sets of chromosomes and alleles that are different from each other and from the diploid cell that entered meiosis one. 